Boxes to Builds, episode number 12, with a company whose model is a number 12, and we're going to finish it up on one of my favorite topics. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome to the Mick Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, six-time top 100 best golf digest club fitters and the last international club maker of the year. If you would, like and subscribe, hit that you know, bell down below, and that way you get more of the videos when they drop. Now, we have been requested to build a set of clubs that came from a very, another large club fitter. Fine. And, but it's a company that we don't normally deal with because uh, they're more of a premium type thing. And for our area, it doesn't go over very well. And it's not because it's bad, it's just it doesn't go over very well. Now, what we have is a set of Zexios. And Zexio is a, we'll call an affiliate with Cleveland and an affiliate with, uh, Srixon, okay, and they are the they're the what take up for the uh, premium line, and they call it moderate swing speeds. Yet they offer a stiff flex, so I'm not sure what all that means. However, it's a moderate swing speeds, and and they make everything in house. Every I mean everything, and it's not a bad little setup. However, we're going to go over some of the design characteristics of this Model 12, so you can make up your mind to whether or not this is something that's for you. All right, so they, they when you go to the website, they talk about this thing being ultra light, right, ultra light. The heads themselves are not ultra light. They're the same as Mizuno, Srixon, all the rest of them. So it's not there. So where is the ultra light at? Well, the ultra light comes from two places in, in the build, the normal build for this. Number one, they start off with about a 60 gram shaft. When you tip it and cut it and all the nine yards, you're right around that 55 to 50 gram shaft. So it's a little bit lighter. Is it the lightest it can be? No, because there's some 40s out there easily. Uh, Miziaki is another one that does, specializes in that. Acra has some that will do very well in that. So it, you know, it. You got to pay attention to the wording. <laughs> you got to pay attention to the wording. What makes it light, though? In one of their grips, and you, you had to listen to the video all the way to the end. One of their grips, they tell you that it puts weight right under the fingers. That means it's a counterbalance, meaning that there's more weight here. So when you take it back, that the head up here feels lighter. All right, it's counterbalancing, and okay. That's not to say bad or good. It's just to say that's what it is. All right, so the golfer goes to the big fitting store and they recommend the Zexio 12. All right, it is a very large club head. All right, very large. This is the eight iron. That is a very large club head. It has a very, very wide sole. All right, a very wide sole. And it also has a modicum of offset. I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but there's quite a bit here. So this is an extraordinarily forgiving club. It has a massive, huh, massive pocket cavity. Now I know you're gonna see it we're doing other ones, but there is a massive pocket cavity in there. So what do pocket cavities do? They bring the center gravity down and back so it can get below the ball, so you can get higher launch angles for stronger lofts. So you would think these things would be grossly, you know, grossly strong. They're not. They're, they are strong, but they're not like, you know, what I would call stupid strong. These are just right up the middle of the distance type clubs, but not like that super distance. So, I mean, this hits all the marks for the middle, right? Moderate, 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 medium, medium, medium. Now, the last bit of it is, and I'm going to see if you can pick it up on the screen, you can. You see how it looks like there's a ring right around here, right? That's because there's a titanium face in this, a very thin titanium face. And what they have is what they call a rebound frame. That's a big thing in the that company, rebound frame. And that rebound frame holds onto this face 
and so that it can launch the club. So bigger ball speeds, all right, bigger ball speeds. And, and so that's what it is. It has an extraordinarily thick top line, and what they've done in order to make it smaller is that they left half shiny and they left half, uh, half shiny and half dulled out. And that gives it that appearance of a smaller top line. Okay, so who's this really for? Well, just like they said, the moderate swing speed. The guy that needs a little bit of, or gal, that needs a little bit of help uh, getting the ball up in the air. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a cold. <laughs> uh, the, for the person who needs a little more forgiveness on mishits, this fits all that bill. For somebody who's a, a guy that chops wood, right, comes straight down. That big wide, that big wide sole, skip him right out, won't get stuck. All those, all those come together. Now, who typically is that, right? Who is that? That's typically older folk, right? Because they've, they're golfers that have enjoyed the sport for a long, long time, and they're the the normal stuff is just they sacrifice distance to get to it. So what's happening is they get the feel here when they swing back, and they go, oh, there it is, and they get a little bit more control uh, going through it with the bigger face so that even on the miss hits, it still gets out there. And when they come down on it, that 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 sole bounces them off. And there you go. Now, yes, it's an older person. It's typically an older person with some discretionary funds. Uh, just a quick trip to the to their website. And these are two and a quarter a stick. All right. Two and a quarter a stick. So make up your mind. Right. So what are we doing? We are putting in some Zelos 7s. We are taking out the MP1200s and putting in Zelos 7s. And what's a Zelos? Let's find that out. All right, so the shafts. Yeah, here's a, again, you gotta keep your eye on the ball with these, with these particular numbers, right? So here's, so again, this is what we just took out, and this is what we're putting in. Now, this says 47 grams on the back. I just measured them cut down and they're between 50, I, I measured two. So 50 and 55. Now does that mean I might hit 47 on them? Yeah, maybe, but this says 47. It's not. Is it lightweight? Oh yeah, it's lightweight. Just not 47. That's where I'm getting at. So the Zello 7. Zello 7 is Nippon's, I think it's basically their lightest steel shaft. And it's not a bad little shaft. Um, if you get, you're not going to be a super aggressive guy swinging one of these, right? But you can be somebody who is very smooth and, and still generate some speed and this thing will stay with you. And now you have all the, all the attributes of a steel shaft. What all these measure out to be, every one but one was 75 and one of them was 74. And so a Zello 7 means it's in the 70. I haven't looked up the spec to see what it is. I'm looking at it. It doesn't say on the it doesn't say on the shaft, but these are discrete length shafts. So to to have them all the same, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to assume 75 since they're all 75 with one. So that's where we're at. Now, <laughs> the real trick here is that this is a taper tip shaft. This is a parallel head. You know that wig wiggling around. So we're gonna have to put in a, <clears throat> so we're gonna have to put in a shim. And that's to fill up the space at the bottom. It's not a big deal. So we're gonna go through that. So now the, the spec also called out for a D4. And you guys have seen me go off about swing weights like this. You have a 70 gram shaft. That is 50 grams, 50 grams lower than what would be standard to get you into a D2, D4 concept already. So that's 50 grams. That's basically 12 swing weight points, right? 12. And that, in order to get that, I need at least 24 grams in order to make that happen. That ain't happening. It is not happening. Now, if I put a lightweight, I could max it out and put like a 10 or a 12 gram in the bottom and then take a whole bunch of weight and put a lightweight grip on the back, which is kind of what they, the Zexio was advertising to get one of these 22 gram or save 22 gram, I'm not sure which one it was, in a very, very lightweight 
uh, wind grip, and they are extraordinarily light. We've used a few, and that would help counterbalance it. Would you get 24 out of that, or would you would you be able to get your swing weights then? Uh, I'd have to venture a guess to say no, but you would be very, very close. However, he don't want that. He wants a different grip. So see how this all goes. And they say they can get it, and I said, well, go ahead. Send them out there and let them go get you your D4 and see what happens. So again, I, when I talk about these things, this lighter weight shaft will make the head feel a bit heavier. At least that's been my experience. They'll be a little heavier. So do I need to specifically get to a D4? Probably not, but we were we are going to put some six gram tip weights in there to help with that feel, and then we are going to install some of our own uh, BBNF ferrules, and I'm going to show you those here in a second. All right, we've we've got a, we've become a kind of a dealer with BBNF, and these are some the shorter ones are called shorties. Those are my favorite. I like those links. The long ones not so much. I don't think they. I mean, they have their place. I just don't like them, uh, but I do like these. And this one's going to be your basic white on black, 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 because our shafts and the heads already have the blue in them, right? If you look, uh, there's the blue right in there, and the blue in the shaft and the blue in the head actually match. I did have some blue ferrules, but they were baby blue; and they didn't match. So this is going to be where we're going to go. So we're going to go put all these together and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how to finish those guys. So give me a few. We'll be right back. All right. I'm into the throes of a cold, <laughs> but we still got to finish the stuff. So we're undoing the Zexio 12 B2B 12 and we're doing ferrules. Why? Well, because working on brand new clubs is really great except for there's an added pressure. You're, the pressure is to make them look like they are new again because the golfer didn't hit them. So it's your job as the club maker to make them look as good as they possibly can be. Whether that be with a new ferrule, uh, a new shine, whatever. But you got to make them look nice. Ferrules are part of that particular product. Now in the past, I have said that they don't form a true-to-life function. They're more decorative. In a lot of cases, that's true except for the collared ferrules. Collared ferrules get in there and they hold the, the shaft in a little bit better. Call it a centering ferrule or whatever you want to call it. And it holds it in tight. Now what I've done here is, this was a taper tip shaft that goes into a parallel hosel. Well, that's no problem, Jim. You just use a shim. That, where you, there you go, right? Except for the top end was a little bit wider. And that seems to be a manufacturing thing here as of late. So you got to make sure that you've got enough shim to take up that whole area. Now, will it, can you get it cockeyed? Yeah, you can a little bit. And that's what we're working with here. So the first thing we got to do is work the ferrule over into a shape that makes it look like part of the golf club. And that's using a 1x42 uh, sanding belt or a sanding machine with a felt belt on it running at 1750 RPM. And what you have to do is the parts that stick out more, and this not just this case, it's in other cases as well, that you'll see that maybe the ferrule wasn't as round as it was before, or the ferrule, the hosel may not be, right? A different shape. That on the parts that stick out further, you take you slow down and then you speed up on the sizes that are not. And that gets them into a shape that makes them look like they belong in the club. And you do that with a felt belt because it doesn't mar the shaft if it was graphite or painted or on the ferrule or on the hosel because of the same thing and it does it and it eats it up really really well right so it's not a it doesn't take a whole lot of time but you have to be very very careful in what you do now you're like jim i don't have a one by 42 felt belt gotcha in one of these two corners there's going to be a thing it's a little card that says hey this is how i did it when you're at home and i've done a video how to do it with just hand tools so you can do it with that and then that way you can get to the same shape. Again, the same thing still applies. You still got to make them look good, right? So after you get them into the right shape, and we got a lot of the nicks and crevices and things taken care of, what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, acetone to them using a two inch, that's what I use, two by two paper towels that I've cut down. I get them thoroughly wet with the acetone, and then I start rubbing them. 
uh, along the shaft, 90 degrees to the way that I was uh, shaping the ferrule. Now, <clears throat> what is this doing? Well, it's shining them up. It's taken all the other mars or scratches or whatever you want to call it from shaping it and getting rid of them. And that's what it's doing. And, uh, and it's also a time for inspection. Did you miss a glue goober or is there something sticking out that you didn't see once before because it's getting covered by dust, right? And you want to see what's going on. So that's what you use when you're getting that one. And this is where you make those types of corrections. You may have to go back and go back to the felt belt and go do it again. You might be able to just flick off the uh, glue booger. You just never know. And you get to that point. And you go, great, so now we're done. No, we're not. As you haven't figured out, I'm kind of a feral nut. And so we, you say, well, Jim, now we just figured it out. We just got them nice and shiny. Well, you did, and you got them nice and shiny, but in my opinion, they're not just protected as yet. And that's what the third step is for finishing this ferrule. And that is using my unstitched buffing wheel with some yellow polish or glands watch, whatever you want to call it. So we have to wait just a little bit of time after we've hit it with the acetone so that the, the plastic on the ferrule will firm back up. Because if you don't, it'll just, this, this wheel will just eat it. So you got to let it settle just a little bit. You know, it's a minute or two. And then we start to polishing. And that's basically what we're doing. We're putting a final polish on the ferrules as taking out the last bit of the marks of anything that might be in there. Last minute inspections to see if anything got past us on the first two steps. And putting a coating on it that actually is layer protection, like waxing your car. And that's what we put on it. Then the last bit of it is you just wipe it all off in order to get there. So now what we're doing is now what we've got to do is we got to cut them down and uh, put the put the grips on it, bend them, and make sure they're in the right uh, loft and lies, and we're good to go. But for this, there's a boxes to builds for dealing with the ferrule number twelve, and hopefully you learn a little bit of something about the the craftsmanship or the artistry for doing a ferrule, and that's really what we want. And we learned a little something about the number twelve and how it's constructed and that kind of stuff that's in there. So if you got any questions, put them in the show notes below. We'll certainly try and get to them. Uh, stay tuned for afterwards a little bit. We'll show you some pictures of the finished product. And as always, let's see your scores go low.